7 types of failure and how to handle them when I was 18, I came up with an idea to launch a clothing brand with Myth and Best Friend. We designed a logo, manufactured our first t-shirts, and talked about our exciting plans for the future of the brand. However, when the moment arrived to register the company and obtain funding, my soon-to-be formal business partner showed that he wasn't as serious about the idea as I had hoped. I had to pressure him into meetings with potential people who could lend us money. I quickly realized that it would be better to take my losses and terminate that idea before we launched a business that would be destined to fail along with ending our friendship. In hindsight, it was a surprisingly wise decision, considering I was only 18 and had little business experience. It stung to watch my dream of owning a clothing company die before it was even born, but it was a necessary milestone in my business life. This story is but one example of failure I experienced in my life. Failure comes in many flavors, and I tasted them all. In this part, each chapter will cover a common type of failure, provide some examples and address how to handle it in the most effective way. Please note that a failure can belong to multiple categories, so sometimes you'll need to mix two approaches to handle your specific situation. Even if you didn't feel that a certain type of failure applies to you, I suggest that you read this chapter in its entirety, so you can understand how people set themselves up for a failure, process it in an unconstructive way, and slash or how they can prevent it from happening again. Chapter 2 Dealing with a failure you couldn't e previous and a failure that you couldn't prevent should be the easiest failure to handle after all, you couldn't have prevented it but unfortunately, it's often the most challenging one to process. Point one of the most common and painful examples is losing a job due to the company cutting costs. Getting fired with no prior notice, virtually overnight can become one of the most dramatic events in life. Another example of a negative event that you often can't prevent is a breakup of a relationship or being cheated on. The dreaded I need to tell you something conversation doesn't always come with a prior notification. Naturally, the longer you were in the relationship, the more difficult it is to recover. Just like an unexpected job loss, losing a key relationship in your life can result in long-term trauma. Is there anything you can do to prepare yourself for a negative event that you can't prevent or to recover from it more quickly? Is a failure sometimes indeed unpreventable or is there something you can always do to reduce the risk of it happening? That's what we'll talk about in this chapter and here's where stoicism comes into play. This ancient Greek school of philosophy proposes several fundamental principles to live by. While they all can be useful and valuable to a modern person, the tenets we're most interested in for the purpose of this chapter are the following one. Accept what can't be changed Arian, a 2nd century disciple of the prominent Greek Stoic Epictetus Openshees and Chiridion of Epictetus, a Stoic manual based on the teachings of Epictetus, with the following words, some things are in our control and others not. 15. Whenever you find yourself angry at a situation you can't change, remind yourself that it's not up to you. I know that it sounds oversimplistic, but as counterintuitive as it is, accepting that things are beyond your control will give you a sense of peace and enable you to move on. After all, there's nothing else you can do, so why not accept that the matter is settled and move on, you dress according to the weather and not according to what you'd like to either to be like. Staying angry when you can't influence a situation is not only unproductive, it's also like giving yourself an unnecessary punishment. Stoicism is based on the concept that peace of mind comes from focusing on what you can control instead of wasting your energy on things you can't change. According to the Stoics, the only things you can always control are your own thoughts and subsequent beliefs, attitudes, and actions. Everything else whatever is not your own thought, belief, or action is outside of your total control, so getting annoyed when something doesn't go your way is a waste of resources. This doesn't mean that Stoics exhibited learned helplessness because they couldn't fully control the world around them. Stoicism has never been about fatalism. Accepting that certain things are beyond your control doesn't mean that you should stop any efforts to improve yourself. Rather, it's about not dwelling on things not going your way, which in turn frees up mental energy to focus on things that you do control. A great habit to cultivate to become better at accepting that you can't change certain things is to deliberately introduce uncomfortable changes in your life. 
By stepping outside your comfort zone, you'll learn how to adapt to unfamiliar situations, and this skill will then help you react with more resilience to an unplanned negative situation over which you can't exert control. For example I've already slept in a car on a couple of occasions. If I'm forced to live out off me car, sleeping in it won't be outside my comfort zone. When facing a situation that you can't change, another way to process negative feelings is to acknowledge your emotions. Try to find the root reason why you're feeling them. Ask yourself what they're trying to tell you and how you can accomplish your original goal in the new situation. Resisting your negative emotions, or worse, venting at everything and everyone is a surefire way to suffer more than necessary. As the old adage goes pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional.